So this is not as common for insulin resistance, but I definitely see it with hypoglycemia. And my theory is I would say hypoglycemia precedes insulin resistance in many cases in the same way that insulin resistance precedes type 2 diabetes. And so what hypoglycemia is, is where your blood sugar tends to be low. And so then what happens is that a person kind of feels the need to eat in order to raise it to feel okay. And so to me, that's like insulin dominance. So that's like your body's overproducing insulin response to the sugar. And so I would say it goes from optimal metabolism to insulin dominance, which we call hypoglycemia, to then insulin resistance, to then ultimately insulin failure. So it's like, first of all, your body produced the correct amount of insulin, then it overproduced the insulin, then the overproduction of insulin starts to mean that it's not getting into the cells anymore, and then finally, it, you know, stops producing it altogether, potentially. Although there are some people who are diagnosed with type 2 diabetes who also still have high insulin, confusingly. And then sometimes they still feel better when they inject the insulin because it's just a brute force technique. It's like, even though your insulin is already high, if you inject a load more, it will still get, it will still produce the sugar in the cells. It's kind of just forcing it with, you know, even more insulin rather than addressing the problem. So that's the sequence to me. So often the hypoglycemia, the way that people address that is to like eat frequently, they like eat every two or three hours. And often they eat, you know, the kind of meals that I would actually maybe recommend if they're doing things properly. So a lot of ways I think it's good, but the problem is they eat so frequently to me that they are, and that is partly because they're not eating correctly, which I'll explain in a minute, but they eat so frequently that the body never gets a chance, chance to detoxify. And so that's one of the other challenges I would say that then could actually lead to the next problem because everything's obviously interconnected. If your body generally is overloaded with all kinds of toxins, Free fatty acids, in my opinion, are not the only thing that can create insulin resistance. Let's put it that way. There's actually all kinds of toxins that if they build up can interfere with the glucose metabolism. And so when you never like stop eating for more than two hours or three hours at a time, your body's more likely to build up those toxins that's more likely to lead to insulin resistance.